Right, so I actually left this 24 hours. Uh, let's pop it out. So, basically either you can put it in the lathe and turn the ridges out or you can fill the ridges in with a bit of um, Bondo, the body filler, something like that. Obviously, you can leave the outside the way it is. That'll no matter. Um, right, here's the fan for it. So, this is... Um, it says it's 15, if you can see that, 12 volts DC, 6 to 15 volts DC. I've actually run it at about 15 or 16 and that seems to give quite a good draft. What we'll have to do is mount it and actually test it in the, the furnace itself and see whether it produces enough air, it may not, um, or if indeed if it produces too much air, in which case we'll simply reduce the voltage. Now I'm going to mount the fan to the uh, reducer. Uh, you could use you could use a, a screw like that if you have it. I happen to have a four millimeter threaded threaded bar, so I just cut some approximately the right size. It is always important to ensure that the chuck is solidly located in the drill. Now I'll fix one of the bolts in before I <laughs> drill the second hole. That's a pain in the arse. Oh dear. Nobody expects that. What I'll do is I'll leave this one in here. And when I've gone round, I'll put them in as I do them. That'll hold it in place. And at the end, I'll turn it over and I'll relieve those at the back so that I can get the nuts and bolts on. I've swapped the drill for a milling cutter uh, called a slot drill. This is a slot drill. Uh, slot drills uh, enable you to go straight down and produce flat faced holes. I mean, obviously, if you don't have this sort of equipment, you could simply make a cut across there with a saw and cut it out from underneath, and you'd basically have relieved it that way. Or you could bring it up against the grinding wheel and just basically grind the grind the edge away so that you can get in at the hole. It's worth noting, noting that I clamped the transition piece down. Uh, this is because when you're uh, milling in this way, you're not, you're not cutting a straight hole, you're cutting away one edge, and it will cause the workpiece to move away from the cutter, unless it's securely clamped. Now I can attach the fan to the transition piece. Right, that's the fan secured. Right, you'll need some sort of a uh, liquid tap. This is a half inch gas tap that I've used. Uh, it is for gas, but it'll work for liquids just as well. Um, to join it to the to the brake pipe, I've turned two pieces of aluminium, I've bored and tapped them half inch 
and at this end I've just drilled and arrow dated the brake pipe into the into the aluminium and on that end I've turned a stub down that's six millimetres to take the hose that I've got. Now basically just turn it down to whatever size a hose is appropriate for what you're using. Something to remember once you've made these is to make sure that they're completely clean inside so that there's no swarf or anything left and the same with your uh, oil feed pipe make sure it's completely clear inside and there's nothing uh, that could block the oil siphon jet with To make the air feed hose, you need two foot of 6mm ID or quarter ID air hose and two female connectors. Drill a hole in the transition piece, the right size for your end connector, and feed the hose through the transition piece. Once you've fed the hose through the transition piece, Take your first section of stainless steel tube and fit that. Remember and align your cutout here with the hole here. Then take the second piece, attach the air fitting, and push the tubes together while removing the hose from the back. There we have it. Thank <laughs> you. 